Okay, so let's try drawing the isomers of pentane. What should we draw first? Mm -hmm. Good. So first, we should do an example where the longest chain equals five carbons. Then what? Now we do the longest chain equals four carbons. So how many more carbons do we have to place? One. All right, so now we have to ask where we can put it. Well, should we put the fifth carbon over here? No. Because that would just take us back to this case. Then the longest chain would really be five carbons. Could we put the, um, the fourth carbon over here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that gives us another isomer. But now let's draw four carbons again and ask if there's any other places that we could put that fourth carbon. Well, would it give me a different isomer to put the fourth carbon over here? like this. So how many isomers have I drawn on the board so far? How many distinct isomers? I mean total? Yeah. Three. One, two. Now are these the same compound or are they different pictures? Are, are these different compounds or are they different pictures of the same compound? Yeah, that's right, which means that our answer a second ago was incorrect. And a second ago, you said there was three isomers on the board, but there's really only two isomers. We just happen to have two pictures of the same thing. Well, we only want to draw distinct isomers, so it's perfectly okay to draw this, but then you need to cross it out because you're going to lose points. So on these types of problems, you lose points if you leave out an isomer, but you also lose points if you include redundant isomers. You only want to have one picture of each isomer. So after you write down each isomer, you have to ask whether it's the same or different from the isomers that you've seen before. All right, so it was okay to write this down as a thought step, but then we have to cross it out. Does it make sense that these are really the same thing? So one important idea in organic chemistry is um, even if two pictures look different, they might be the same thing from different angles. For example, here's my hand. Imagine taking a photograph of my hand. And now imagine taking a photograph of my hand again. Well, if you looked at those two photographs, they would look very different from each other. One photograph would look like this, and one photograph would look like this. But if somebody asked you, how many hands have you photographed, the right answer would be one. Yeah? Even though they look different, they're two, they're just because they're from two different angles. So that's one of the key skills in organic chemistry to figure out whether two pictures are different hands or different, the same hand from different angles. So basically, we could say to ourselves, um, is there any way I could flip or rotate this picture so it looks like this? If I could flip or rotate this picture so it looks like this, then they're really the same molecule. Well, really, all I have to do is flip it like this. Um, that, that would take this uh, carbon onto the left-hand side, and I might also have to flip it like this as well. So I need to move this to the left and have it pointing up. So I could flip it like this, and then flip it like this, and then it would look like this. Okay. That's actually not such an easy skill, uh, doing that mental flipping and rotating for some molecules. But here, I think it's kind of straightforward. Um, so uh, the symmetry here tells us that this was really the same thing. All right, so I still only have one isomer here. Are there any other places I could put that fourth carbon? Well, I tried putting it here. That didn't work. I put it here. That gave me this. I tried putting it here, and that gave me a repeat. So could I put it here? But that gave me a new isomer. No, because that would just take me back to five. Actually, once you kind of pass the halfway point, you can kind of stop. So once we pass the halfway point, it's pretty obvious that anything that we do to these two carbons is just going to reproduce um, what happened when we put the fifth carbon on one of these two carbons. You really only have to imagine going halfway through. So, so far, we've only got two isomers. But what's the next step? The next step is to try to draw a longest chain of three carbons. Like this. Now how many carbons do I have left to put in? Two. Two. Should I put one of them here? Well, this is going to give me four. Yeah, so there's no point putting that there, because that would mean the longest chain would be four carbons. So can I put one of them here? Mm -hmm. 
how many carbons do I have left to put in now? Well, I still have one more carbon to put in. Well, where can I put that carbon? Um, well, I can't put it here. Because if I did, then the longest chain would be four carbons. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And that would take me back to here. So if I put the fifth carbon up here, that would really reproduce one of the previous cases. Because again, I would be back to having the longest chain be more than just three carbons. So I need to put in the, the fifth carbon so that the longest chain is still three carbons. So is there any place I could put the last carbon here? I could put it here. Is there room for it here? On um, this carbon, well, yes, because carbons can have a maximum of four bonds. Carbons can have a maximum of four bonds, so it's allowable to put them on the last carbon over here. So this is a real and allowable compound. Okay, good. Now we have to keep working. Is there any other place that we could put those two last carbons? Um, well, again, I can't put any of them over here, because then I'd be back to having the longest chain with four carbons. So this is really the only example where the longest chain is three carbons. So what uh, is the answer to the question, how many isomers does pentane have? Three. Yeah, three different isomers. So that's the method for doing these types of problems. You start by drawing the longest possible chain, then you do the next longest, then you do the next longest. I suppose theoretically now we should start by trying to draw a longest chain of only two carbons. But I think it's pretty clear that there's no way to put in the remaining three carbons without getting the longest chain to be more than just two carbons. Once I put in even one more carbon, now the longest chain is three carbons. So there's no way that you could have the longest chain only being two carbons.